Hola, hola, bienvenidos al Trek Ball Show. For today, we have our senior regulatory correspondent, Brad Kuhn, on Pro Act Part 2. One of our favorite couples, Trekker G and his wife, as they talk married life on the road and men on the streets with Matt the Little Guy on the importance of having tools in your truck. We start today with news from D.C. as the controversial PRO Act continues to make waves. The bill, which includes a national-level ABC test to determine a contractor's status, may become part of President Biden's $3 trillion infrastructure bill. Although it has already been passed by the House, if it is rolled into the infrastructure bill, it's expected to be brought to a vote in July. Now, unlike the freestanding bill, which was not expected to survive a Senate filibuster, there's now a chance the act could be passed. Brad Kuhn explains. We're talking today with Congressman Andy Levin, representative of Michigan's 9th District. Uh, representative Levin serves on the House Education and Labor Committee and was a co-sponsor of House Resolution 842, the Protecting the Right to Organize Act, which was passed by the House of Representatives on March 9th. I know you've got high hopes for the PRO Act. Could you tell our viewers what you hope it'll accomplish? Yeah, basically lift up the working class of this country. Uh, we, for 40 years, the working people of this country have gotten the short end of the stick. Workers have seen their raises go up, uh, their, their incomes go up literally 1% in the last 40 years, whereas the top 10% of people have seen their incomes go up over 100%. And this would just free up workers to form unions. This is just private sector workers. And basically, whereas years ago, as many as a third of workers had unions, today, 6% of private sector workers have unions. We got the worst income and wealth inequality in 100 years. And the average person is struggling just to put food on the table. They don't have 400 bucks for an emergency, on and on and on. They don't have enough retirement. And so people who form unions make more money, have more health care, have more pensions, have a, a better life, and they help all the non-union workers too, because the non-union employers want to compete, you know, to keep their workers. So it would it would restore the middle class of this country, basically. That's what I'm fighting for. Our viewers are mostly independent owner operators, small business truckers, many of whom have found success by leasing themselves on as independent contractors to larger companies, uh, which have a lot, of, they handle a lot of the stickier details of running a business, such as negotiating insurance rates and finding loads and things like that. So these folks say that the PRO Act is going to drive them out of business, specifically the ABC test which um, specifies, among other things, that the employer cannot be in the same line of work as the contractor. And it, it sure looks like that's the case, or is there some kind of loophole that we're missing here? A union only forms when a majority of the people working someplace wants to form it. So if your listeners or viewers are like, well, we like things just the way they are, well, they ain't changing, Brad, because it's, it's up to them to make any change. That's the way unions work. Say a trucking company has some employees. They have a, a core of employees, and then they have a group of leased on employees um, that allows them to kind of manage their, um, their loads. Um, say those the employees that are within the trucking company unionize. Um, do that? Can that company still contract with independent contractors, or um, or is it now a union shop where there you're either an employee or you don't haul? So then, when the workers file to form a union, the two parties have to agree on what's called the bargaining unit. So they would explicitly have to decide. Well, what about those hundred owner operators? Are they in or are they out? And from the employer's point of view, the company, they might say, well, heck, we like that flexibility. We hope they're out. From the union's point of view, they're going to say, well, would those people vote yes or no? <laughs> you know. And if they think they'd vote no because they like it the way they have it, they would probably, both sides would probably say, let's leave them outside of the bargaining unit. So, you know, it's likely they'd be left out. Now, if the union said, you know what, screw it. We think we can win no matter what. We want everybody in. Then it's possible that those people would be included in the unit. And then it would be up, you know, they, they get a vote on whether to form a union or not. And then, you know, I guess they could campaign with the other the employee drivers 
to say, hey, let's, you know, let's leave it the way it is or vote against the union. So they would have at least two bites at, at that apple. And I, you know, but my sense is that a lot in a lot of cases, both the union and the employer would have an interest in, in leaving it like it is. If a union were to come in and and be certified, would the independent contractors have to pay union dues then to continue to operate as independent contractors on that with that company? The Supreme Court decided, I think, in 1947 that no one can be made to be a member of a union. It's totally voluntary. So but they so they couldn't be ever made to join the union or pay union dues. But the under the PRO Act, if the company and the union under basic freedom of contract principles decides, hey, in our contract, everybody benefits by the collective bargaining agreement. Everybody gets the pay, the benefits, and the representation of the union. So every we will have a fair share fee, or basically a fee to administer the collective bargaining agreement. That could cover the independent operators. Now, the union would not be allowed to put any political contributions, any, you know, like events or larger things, their convention, you know, whatever other activities. But the cost of actually negotiating the contract and representing those employees could be charge to everybody so that everybody pays their fair share. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, uh, union workers in the sector that the Labor Department calls transportation and material moving occupations, right, the exact thing that truck drivers are, make 15000 a year more than non-union drivers. So, I mean, there may be some benefit to this, to the drivers, because that's just like straight up government statistics that unionized uh, truckers make more than non-union ones. So I can see, you know, it's my goal here, Brad, my personal idea is let's have a free market for workers just on their own, without the boss, without the company telling them what to do. Let workers decide for themselves what's in their own best interest. And so in this case, you you have a constituency of a bunch of very important workers in our society and their voice needs to be protected, along with all the other workers. Thank you very much. And for the uh, Truck Boss Show, I'm Brad Kuhn. I'll see you down the road. Thanks, Brad. Be sure to subscribe to the Truck Boss Show so you don't miss any updates about the PRO Act as we continue to watch the story unfold from Capitol Hill. Isela? We know marriage isn't a piece of cake, but I know a couple who talk to us about marriage life while on the road. Check it out. See, you've been on the road for how long? 29 going on 30 years. Out of all those years that you've been driving, at what point in your career did your wife and you make a decision to say, hey, join me on the road? We planned that for the whole 29 to 30 years, to be honest with you. Yeah. We just had to wait for the kids to grow up, and then life happened, and she she came out on the road with me for a year after the kids all grew up, and grandma got sick, so she had to go back home for another four years and take care of grandma. And now she's back on the road with me again. Full time, he's stuck with me. <laughs> he has no choice now. <laughs> the door and shoving her out. And for some reason, gets back in. What changed for you? Everything. I don't know where nothing in this truck is. <laughs> I cannot find nothing in this truck. Almost 30 years doing this, and you're so used to, you know where every single thing is, and it's just routine. Well, when your spouse comes on the truck with you, you have to find a whole new routine. And... Y'all got to find a groove together. Yeah, because you want to kind of strangle the other person when you can't find what you need. What would you say are the benefits of having someone with you on the road? This is a PG show, isn't it? Oh, good Lord. No, I'm just <laughs> No, it, 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 she's my best friend. She just is. So, I mean, what better, what, what better way to spend your life than have your best friend with you? And, you know, now that we are together full time you know if he stops somewhere that you know we decide we want to rent a car or something like that and go do something we actually go do it prior to that he was in the truck and he great you know eat breathe eat go to sleep you know just like a robot he didn't veer out of the truck he just was all work 24 7. now do you feel that that is a healthy thing to have someone with you on the road i don't take care of myself very well when i'm by myself you know like like she said it's wake up uh, roll all day, eat at the end of the day, and go right to sleep. And that's my routine every single day, day in, day out, till I get home. Not no more. <laughs> now, when I have her on my truck, I worry more about her. So, you know, it'd be 10, 15 times a day. Hey, honey, you hungry? Hey, do we need to stop? You hungry? 
now we're in this small little square box, it's a small space. That's when maybe tensions can arise. How do you, or how did you guys handle that? She just had to understand that what I say goes and, and that <laughs> You're the boss. <laughs> yeah, hey, it didn't work that way. <laughs> no, we actually get, we get along very, very well. I mean, you'd be surprised. Because, you know, when we're driving and stuff, he's all about, you know, trip planning. Everything's going through his mind. And sometimes I'll have to be like, hey, what's going on up there? I see the wheels are turning. Come out. <laughs> I'll go a whole day without saying two words. Your most favorite thing that you have enjoyed about having your wife with you on the road? I got a built-in sandwich maker. <laughs> girl, or Dr. Thunder girl. It's just spending the time together. We spent yeah. so many years apart. And like I said, she, she's always been my best friend. So, you know, it's, it's like a, it's like a semi-retirement for us. Yeah. It's a working retirement for us. You know, being able to not have to pick up the phone to talk to one another, just turn around and say like, Hey, <laughs> yeah, just not, now instead of just yelling at each other, we can actually smack each other. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Is this something that you could say that you would say, you know, tell someone else, hey, if you ever had that opportunity for suddenly your fellow drivers that are out there right now? It'll it'll make or break a relationship. You'll find out if you really meant to be together. I mean, not be married, but be together or not be together. And, and, and I also tell, you know, like the spouses and stuff like that, that I've talked to, you know, do a ride along with, with your significant other, because then you get to see from their point of view, not just you being at home and hearing about them talk about it on the phone, but actually see what they go through so that, you know, you can be a little bit more compassionate because it is a lonely, lonely place out here on the road by themselves. Cool story. <laughs> and are you happy that you get to be with your husband on the road? Oh, I love it. I do. I love it. Depends on what day you ask her. Being together on the road and a couple, marriage and all that stuff. You've talked about it on your page as well. But you guys do an amazing job at it. So thank you so much for, you know, being a part of this. Thanks for having us. I'd much rather see what it's like to be together in, in Hawaii. Just saying. <laughs> I can tell you, you'll have an amazing time. <laughs> <laughs> I just love them. Thank you, Trucker G and his wife for that great advice. Carlin? Well, it's time for everyone's favorite little guy, Matt. This week, he's out on the road talking about the importance of carrying a traveling mechanic shop with you at all times. What's going on, everybody? Little guy here with the Truck Boss Show. And in a segment that we did a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about some of the important things to have with you when you're out on the road. And one of those things is tools. And I have a situation here that I'm gonna show you uh, why it's important to have the tools. So let's walk over here and check out this problem I'm having. I had a wire. As you can see, it's all melted and frayed and burnt. What happened was this little, what's left of this little white clip here was somewhere up in here. But what happened was it broke. When the clip broke, the wire was sitting down here on top of the DPF box where all the exhaust goes through. And this thing gets super hot when it does a regen, like super, super hot. So as you can see, it melted the wires. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to fix something like this. So here we go. It's important to make sure you have tools with you. A little five minute repair and I got my lights back. Simple, easy. Some electrical tape, a wire cutter, and two butt connectors and some zip ties. Now you can see 
wire's not hanging down anymore. It's tucked up nice and neat in here. And we won't have no more shorts. Yeah. So, little guy, truck ball show here. Make sure you have tools with you. Yeah. Ah, I'm out of here. You know, Matt is always full of great information. He's been driving on the road for a long time, so of course he's going to be able to give you guys some tidbits and whatnot. That's why he started his channel, was to help yeah, you know those, those early drivers. Too, yeah. So I hope you guys take some of that advice. Exactly. <laughs> take notes, guys. <laughs> well, for next week, we have Ronnie Link, a truck driver with an unbelievable story, and also Kenworth versus Peterbilt review. And we have announced the Boss Box winner for March. Go check it out. And of course, don't forget to join the Boss Nation. That's where you're going to need to go in order for you to win those Boss Boxes. And let me tell you, our April Boss Box, it's a pretty good one. You're going to oh, want to yeah. enter to win that We're one. We're going to so, hook you up. That, that's right. All you have to do is go watch that video and you can see what you have to do to win. Voila. That's simple. Simple as that. And of course, don't forget to like, share, subscribe because we can't keep bringing you this awesome information you know, without your support. So keep supporting us, guys. We appreciate it. We yes, really do. That's right. Thank you so much for all that. And Carlin, why do we do this? Because you're the boss. <laughs>